A year ago, I moved from San Diego, California to Miami, Florida, sight unseen. And it ended up being one of the best decisions of my entire life. And this video is gonna walk you through exactly what the journey was for me to make that final decision to leave California and come to Florida, what my first experience was, and what I recommend to other people potentially looking to do the same thing. Now, I feel like I need to be transparent. There are two reasons I'm making this video. Number one, I want you watching this video right now to seriously consider moving to Miami because I absolutely love it and I think you may as well. But number two, I get asked probably six or seven times a week by my clients if they should also move down to Miami. And I say the same story over and over and over again. And so I'm gonna use this video as a simple resource I can now send them in order to convince them to come down here because since I moved here, I've convinced over 24 of my clients to pack up their belongings and come down to the Sunshine State as well. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ravi Abubala, founder of Scaling With Systems, where we build profitable client acquisition systems for our clients. Now, in order to tell you the story of why I moved to Miami, let me first paint the picture of why I left San Diego, California. So a few years ago, for an undisclosed amount of time, because I think the IRS might watch my videos, I was potentially partially not full residency staying in California. Now, when I first came to California at this undisclosed time, for an undisclosed amount of time. It was beautiful. It was everything I ever wanted and the weather was beautiful. The people were very nice. It was a really kind of small town vibe in San Diego and I moved into a beautiful 6,000 square foot house with a few of my closest friends at the time and we ended up using that time to astronomically grow our business being that close to each other. However, after an undisclosed amount of time of me being there, there started a small little worldwide pandemic that kind of threw everything for a loop and all the things that I had once enjoyed about the city and states of San Diego, California, I no longer liked. And in addition to that, out of all of the states out there that I saw were taking corrective measures, I felt like California was, in my opinion, one of the worst. And so then I was doing the math and I was saying that I was literally paying 50% plus of my income to California in order to have less than 10% of the freedoms that I would have in another state. So I don't have to be some kind of math genius to figure out that I did not feel like it was a fair exchange of my value as a business owner to the government for what I was receiving in return. So that's when I first started getting a little bit tickled by the fact that I was paying all this money for pretty much nothing in return. But then the catalyst, my friends, was that I came down to Tampa, Florida for the first time since everything had broken out to visit some friends. And when I came down to Tampa, Florida, boom, it was like, this thing didn't exist in the first place. Everybody was free. It was like the 70s out in California. I mean, people were just kissing each other. There was like hundreds of people on yachts. There was no problem whatsoever. And whether you agree with the way they were doing things or not doing things, the thing that I liked about it was that I had the choice. It was an option that I could choose whether I wanted to partake in this stuff or not. But it's just crazy how when you're surrounded by a city, state, and area where everyone thinks one thing, and then you're trans plan to a different area where nobody's thinking that exact same thing, it kind of pulls you out of this, snaps you out of this reality, alternate reality that you were in, and it showed me what's possible. And the reason that's relevant to the story here is because literally one week after I came home from that trip to Tampa, I packed up every single thing that I owned in San Diego. I paid some guy $6,000 to drive it across the country for me, and I flew with my girlfriend and my two friends to Miami, Florida sight unseen, which means I had literally never been to Miami before that. I didn't even know what we were flying into. We landed and I lived in a hotel and an Airbnb for almost 60 days while I tried to figure out what my next steps were. Almost immediately before I had even found the place that I was eventually going to live in, where I'm shooting this video right now, I could see the difference in where Miami was, the people that are around it, what their thought and worldview was versus where I was in California. Most notably, I noticed there was a lot more business owners here and there was a lot more people serious about their growth. I feel like San Diego, California was much more laid back vibes. And I have a bunch of successful friends that are even in Orange County and Irvine and San Diego. In those areas, you can be a big fish in almost what is a little pond. So everybody thinks you're like, the big cool cat around campus because you make a few million dollars. And if you come to Miami, you make a few million dollars, then you could 
luckily be like the maid for one of these people here that makes like 120 million dollars a year and i personally like being a small fish in a big pond and i like also being the dumbest and poorest person in a room so when i started going to the gyms around here and i started going out to restaurants and i would strike up conversations with people almost everybody was incredibly successful or they were on the way to be successful and not just talk successful they were literally like committing their lives to it what i with things that i i've done in the past few years myself and so i immediately started meeting people making networks and connections and within probably the first two to three weeks of living in miami i feel like i had 10 times the serious network business connections that i did spending an undisclosed amount of time in california before that fast forward a little bit i found a four bedroom four and a half bath that i absolutely fell in love with i have a beautiful view of the water i wake up to every single morning i've essentially created an entire lifestyle around miami that i absolutely love and if you're still with me in this video, I wanna rip through a few of the reasons why I love Miami over any other city out there. So number one is something I've already touched on, but is the quality of the people that live here. I will say that I've built multiple online companies and I spend most of my time sitting alone in my bedroom building stuff. But when I do wanna go out, when I happen to go to the gym, when I wanna go to a restaurant, the people that are around me, the people that I sit with in the sauna room, when I'm in Miami, they're totally different than any other city or state that I've lived in. They're hungry. They, they moved to Miami to prove something. They have a chip on their shoulder. You know, even just the cost of living in Miami is so high. So if you're living here, you're probably doing something right if you're in like the Brickle or Edgewater or uh, downtown area. Now, the number two reason why I love Miami, and this is just critical if you run a business, is obviously the tax structure. There is a 0%, you heard that right, ladies and gentlemen, 0% state income tax in Miami. It absolutely, unequivocally, without a doubt, blows my mind that I have successful friends that are taking home multiple seven figures a year in California and just willy-nilly give it away to the Californian government. They are happy to give away 50% of their income, but the bottom line, and I told this at a dinner that I was at in California when I went to a dinner with some of my successful friends in California, the bottom line is this. If I run a business, and we'll just use easy number here. Let's say that I take home $1 million every single year and I'm competing against someone who lives in California and they also take home $1 million a year. So we have equal amounts of, um, of taxable income, right? So $1 million a year. The difference though, is that the amount of money that I am able to take home myself is going to be obviously leaps and bounds higher, anywhere from 10 to 16% higher than the person that is living in California. And it's not like we live in a time frame where being in California is like that big of a deal. It's not like all the talents in California, everyone's working online anyway. So why does your business need to be based out of there? So over a long enough time horizon, let's say for the next five years, I stayed in Florida, you stayed in Miami, or I mean, sorry, I stayed in Florida, you stayed in California, then technically speaking, I would have half a million dollars, roughly, uh, and more money to spend on myself, on investments, on my business than you would have. And you don't really get to know where your money is being put to use and if it's even being put to use effectively in the first place. We won't talk about that. This is not a political video. So if you are a serious business owner and you are really trying to grow and scale, I absolutely don't know how it could be in the best interest of you or your company to stay in the state of California. And the third and final reason why I love living in Miami is the things to do. So most people think that Miami, you're just like partying and you're going to like 11 every single night and you're drinking seven days a week. I drink maybe three to four times a year and I still absolutely love Miami because there's so much to do down here and it is becoming what New York was many years ago, the financial capital of the United States. I think there's a lot of business moving down here as well. So there's a lot of events and uh, things that you can attend to. So the Bitcoin conference comes down here. You know, it's becoming a huge cryptocurrency city, which I absolutely love because I'm a big cryptocurrency person. There's a lot of business events that are coming down here as well. A lot of the venture capitalist firms that you saw in California are moving to Miami as well. A lot of the SaaS companies are coming out here. And then in addition to that, you know, I have access to really, really beautiful places that I can fly my plane to. So I am a pilot. If you're new to the channel, I own my own plane on top of running my own business. And so I can fly my plane to a bunch of really incredible places like the Keys or the Bahamas uh, and be able to spend one or two days there and not have to deal with like mountainous terrains and uh, dangerous stuff that I would deal with if I was living over on the West Coast. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. If you live anywhere in the world other than Miami and you have been kind of considering maybe coming over to Miami this 
my friends, is your sign. This is me coming down from above, whispering in that little ear of yours and letting you know that Miami is the place to be. If you guys got value out of this video, please do me a quick favor. Smash the like button, hit subscribe, and let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you're pro California, maybe you're pro Minnesota. In any case, I'd like you to comment down below and let me know so that we can have a respectful argument in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this video and you actually want to see the place that I live with in Miami, the thing that I love so much, be sure to check out the video on your screen here, which is actually a house tour of my four bedroom, four and a half bath. I'll see you guys there.